Welcome to Introduction to Mobile App Development, Module 2, Getting Started with Apps and App Studio. Today, we will discuss designing and creating your app, work within App Studio to build an app, and then briefly touch upon managing your apps in App Studio. When setting off to build your app, your first decision point is whether to leverage one of the existing templates or start from scratch with the empty app template. App Studio provides a library of templates that cover several of the common types of informational apps you might want to create. If you were to choose an app template like the sports team template, you would find it already populated with common sections like a team roster page, videos, awards, etc. Templates also have a custom theme applied with some relevant icons, which can save some time when building your first revision of your app. Templates can also help point you in the right direction as far as what you might want to hook up your app to. For example, the sports team app has a blog section created. The blog would point to an RSS feed, which would serve as a reminder to locate relevant RSS feeds to hook up to your app. Keep in mind that the templates are merely stating points. You can add additional sections and content, as well as delete the initial sections. We will explore the available templates within App Studio shortly. The minimum requirements for starting an app published in the store are title, description, and logo. Do not underestimate the importance of these items. A title is important because it is the primary means by which your app will be located in the App Store. If you name it something obscure, people won't even think to preview it because they won't recognize what type of app it is. Ideally, choose a title that strongly relates to what the app does. The app logo has similar concerns. You will want a logo that is easy to discern, as it will not be very large. Try to avoid small details in a logo that might get lost on people with poor vision. Consider logos with colors that have enough contrast to be easily readable. Remember that different devices or phones will have different color settings, which might not work well with certain color choices of your logo. Your app description is also very important for people trying to locate your app in the App Store. When people search for an app, the description will be used. The description is also important because it provides potential users with more information about your app, which will help them decide if this is what they're looking for. A good description will succinctly Describe your app in a broad range of its functionalities. Avoid packing a description with keywords as these will likely be filtered out by the App Store search engine. Let's get a better understanding of data sources and how they relate to App Studio sections and content. This diagram illustrates how data sources relate to sections in your app. In an App Studio app, a section is represented by a screen that you can switch to and from by swiping left and right. Each time you swipe, you land on a new section. As you can see in this diagram, sections are represented in purple and can be traced back to a data source. Data sources are the content that will populate your sections. Some examples of data sources are Flickr photo album, a Facebook page, a YouTube video query, a Bing search, HTML5 content, etc. This means that each section contains a data source or in the case of a menu section, it's a collection of menu items. To change what is displayed in any particular section, you can modify your data source. This might amount to changing the search criteria on a big search or the URL for an RSS feed in an RSS section. The bottom row in our diagram represents pages in an App Studio app. You will notice that in some cases, there can be multiple pages for a section. Let's use the Flickr photos as an example. This section would display the first page with a list of photos. If you tap or select a photo, the second page is displayed with the enlarged photo and potentially some additional information. To change how your pages look, you can use App Studio to edit a section. So to recap, a data source controls what is displayed in a section. A page controls what sections look like and can be configured by editing the section. An app created in App Studio can contain up to six sections. If you need to connect your app to more than six sources, you can use a menu and add the sections to the menu selections. 
Let's take a look at a few data sources and how to use them. Flickr is a website specializing on photo sharing and photo organizing. In Flickr, you can create photo galleries to share photos with friends or the general public. App Studio allows you to connect to Flickr photo galleries and include the photos in your app. You could, of course, include the photos as part of your app, but this would require you to republish the app every time that the photos changed or that they needed to be updated. By connecting to a Flickr photo gallery, you can change the photos in your gallery and your app will always show the newest photos. To use a Flickr data source, you need to specify a search or a Flickr user. After saving your search or user, the photos are immediately displayed in the app preview. You can also display HTML5 content in your App Studio app. HTML5 sections allow you to add your own custom content and design exactly how you wish it to be displayed. This type of section is useful for information that is largely static and will not change over time. Examples of this might be the About page for your app or the legal and copyright information. If you have HTML pages or information that is already available on the web, you might consider linking directly to the content from an HTTP menu item we'll discuss shortly. A menu is one of the possible section types that you might add to your app. A menu section is comprised of a number of options of menu items. Each of these menu items can link to a section or perform an action. Menus can contain up to 24 menu items. Using a menu to link to a section is a means to use many more than the six main sections available. The difference between sections on a menu and main sections is that the ones on the menu cannot be navigated to by swiping left and right on the main screen. Menu actions provide a method for performing a wide range of common tasks. You can link to a web page, open a map, send an email, call a phone number, and a number of other things. Let's switch back to App Studio and take a look at menus, Flickr, and HTML5 now. Okay, let's jump into a demo. What you see here in front of you is the Start new. So although we did a quick demo in module one, we're going to start fresh from here right now. Sign in to appstudio.windows.com. You'll sign in with your Microsoft account as I previously mentioned, and you'll end up on your My Projects page. Um, you'll have all your, all your previous projects here, and you can jump in and edit them anytime or regenerate them just by following the link to the right. For now, we'll just start with the brand new one. So let's click empty app just like we had done before and we can see the preview and just to show you quickly uh, let's look at one of the other templates. I'm going to click my favorite band just so you know what the preview actually is. So it's pretty cool that you get a pretty quick look at what the app will look like out of the box if you really didn't make any design changes. As you can see here on the left that's a preview of what the phone would look like and the tablet or PC on the right. So let's cancel and we'll go back to empty app. All right. Now we click Create. App Studio will bring us right to the main center of where you'll do most of your work. First thing, I'm going to make this uh, about Boston, my hometown. So let's do Boston. And you click on this to give it an icon. You can choose from your computer and upload the image. You can get it from your OneDrive or from App Studio Resources. For the purposes of the demo, I'm going to use App Studio Resources. Uh, let's pick one that makes a lot of sense for a city. Yeah, maybe that one. Yeah, that one is much better. How about that? Choose that for a city. Now, I'll most likely come back at a later point once I have a better icon, just, just for the purposes of the demo. All right, now we want to add a section. Before we usually do anything, you want to click the Save button as you move throughout your editing process. You'll know when you have it saved because there'll be a pop-up, and I'll show you during the demo. First thing I'm going to do is add a menu. As you can see, there are only six sections that you can add to the main page when the app launches. That doesn't restrict you to six items, though. So let's add a menu. And I'm going to call it Useful Links. 
Okay, so now that we've named our menu useful links, let's start adding some content to it. So if you expand this part, you'll see now that you get to add more sections just like you did up here. So what I want to do is I want to add a menu action, which will create an action for you. Now, what are these actions? Take a look at the list of items here under data configuration. You can choose things from a phone call, create an email, FTP, any one, any one of the here maps. You can use address and directions, which is pretty cool, uh, and Nokia Music. So, but for now, we're only going to add a link to the Boston.com city's website. So I've opened it in another tab. The URL is www.cityofboston.gov, so I just copied it into my clipboard. Come down here, and we paste it in. Click confirm, boom. So now we can edit it, but there's no icon. Let's click the icon. Let's grab an icon from App Studio. I think the web one would make more sense because it shows that you're going to a website. There we go. That looks much better. But it still says menu action. We don't want that. We want to say City of Boston website. Now we click Save. And there we go. Right there on the left side in the preview, you can see what's going on. Let's add one more. Um, let's go to the visitors page. Let's grab the URL now while that we're here. Expand the useful links again. Want to add another menu action. Keep it on HTTP. Clear it. Paste it. This time, let's give it a name first. City of Boston Visitors. And confirm. Okay, now once we click save, let's take a look at inside. We want to change that icon to make it look better like a website link. Click save. And look at that. Now we have a section. It actually is a menu of menu actions. Okay, let's start adding some color to the app now. So for the main area, I want to add a Flickr data source. So if we click Flickr, you'll get the pop-up that starts every time you pick a new section, which is to start configuring the data. For a Flickr section, you have two options. You can choose to look up a user. So if you know the Flickr username, you can follow their account and pull in all their photos. Or, even better, you can choose search. So I don't know, or I don't want to follow one particular user in this case. I want a bunch of pictures from Boston. So I'm just going to type in Boston as a search term. Let's confirm it. Hit save. Now let's take a look at the section. Click the edit. Now, this is the area where you you really get to start adding some personal flair. What you see on the left is the preview of what it'll look like with your current selections. This big blue block is the view that you're currently looking at and able to edit on the bottom. So on the main page of the app, part of the first six sections is what they'll see here. So here are different layout options that you can choose. And underneath the layout option, you have the bindings, which I'll explain in a minute. I think we just want to show the pictures in a Pinterest-like layout. So that looks pretty cool. Let's keep that. Um, now, when the user clicks on one of the photos, it's going to bring them to this next page. So let me select it, which will let you edit its different features, and play around with the different layouts. I think I like this one best, the one I was already preset. Um, now underneath, you see a thing titled bindings. This allows you to change what is bound to these slots. So in this particular template, there's a description slot, which is right underneath the photo. And then there's an image slot, which is what the image is actually bound to. Now, if you select the little hamburger button, 
you'll have a list of all the different data items that Flickr gives to App Studio to be, to be able to display. Now, these are bound by their name to make it easier to use in App Studio. So if I were to change this to um, published, which is the date that the photo was uploaded and published, um, it doesn't look very great. So summary was a pretty good option. Okay. Over here on the right, the page to extras is really cool. This is where you get to add some cool features that you don't have to write any code for, and this is where App Studio comes in very handy. Text to speech. The phone will actually read aloud what you want it to when the user clicks the button read out loud. So if I flip this on, you still have one more thing to do. See the hamburger button? It looks just like the bindings, and will actually do the same thing as the bindings. You get to choose what part of the data source that you want the phone to read out loud. In this case, summary makes the most sense. Now underneath, you see the share text switch. Let's flip that on. What that allows the user to do is it opens up the share contract on the phone, which allows them to share it through NFC, uh, email, messaging, pretty much anything they have connected to their phone. And pin to start. One of the greatest features of Windows Phone, this will actually take the app article or section that you have in this section and pin it to the start screen so they can quickly jump back into it at another time. All right, everything looks pretty good. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you was that you have this data option right next to the pages. So the pages on the left is how it looks. The data one on the right is the actual items coming in from the data source. Now, if you made a mistake when you're first setting it up or you want to change what it looks up, or maybe you wanted to change it to a user instead of a general search, you can come back and do this at any time. All right, click Save. Now we can back out. And now our app is on its way. But I don't want the links to be first. I want the pictures to be what the user sees first. So if you hover over the middle and drag this, there you go. You can rearrange it anytime you want. One note, after you rearrange it, you got to click Save. That's it. Okay, so that's it for this demo. We'll continue further with this specific project in the next demo. There are a number of other data sources that you can use for your sections. Some of these include collections, RSS, YouTube, and Bing searches. Additionally, the App Studio team is working actively to add additional data sources on an ongoing basis. You might find even more available when you create your first app. The RSS feed allows you to connect to blog sites and other things like news feeds. Rich site summary URLs are commonly available from sites that publish information or news on an ongoing basis. The YouTube data source allows you to specify a user, a playlist, or a search, and will display all the videos returned. Similarly, the Bing search data source allows you to specify a search and display all items returned by that search. Collections will allow you to connect to data from databases, text data files, or a variety of possible sources. Collections are covered in more detail in a later section. The following is a list of the initial data sources available in App Studio. Flickr and HTML we covered earlier in the session. If you wish to see further demonstration of Bing, RSS, and YouTube, you can view the supplemental video the ins and outs of Windows App Studio. Collections will be covered in a later session, so don't spend too much time playing with them just yet. Once you have added all the content to your app, you can start refining the look of your app. The Themes tab allows you to select from the two predefined themes, light style and dark style, or you can define your own custom style. If you select the custom style option, you can specify the foreground, background, and the application bar colors from a palette of the full breadth of colors. Additionally, you can specify a background image instead of a solid color background. Once you have finished creating your app, you can use App Studio to generate the app. Generating an app provides you with a number of different packages that you can use. Before you run an App Studio app on your phone or device, you must install the code signing certificate. More detail on installing the certificate can be found in the supplemental videos. App Studio also generates an installable package that can be used to install the app on the phone or device. 
the published package, can be submitted to the App Store to publish your app. Published packages from App Studio require no further configuration and can be used directly in the submission process. A source code package is also generated for those who wish to take their app into Visual Studio to perform further customization of their code. If you wish more detail on these packages, you can watch the supplemental videos included with this course. For now, we will jump back into App Studio and show you how to generate these packages. So now that we have a couple sections, uh, I think I'm done with this app for now. Just to show you how to add some coloring and to actually generate it and install it on your phone. So we're done with the sections and you'll notice there's a tab next to content that's labeled themes. One thing that I like what they've done with App Studio is you can pretty much follow the tabs in order. It's pretty much the order that you need to do when you're building the app. So once you're done with the content, then you come over to themes. You'll notice there are three sections that you can do some configuring with. You can choose a light style. Let's select light style. This is what the app would look like with light style. If you notice the foreground, uh, the text becomes black, the background becomes white. However, you must consider that if you had white icons with transparent backgrounds, it'd be hard to see. So as you can see right to the left of the links, you really can't see the icon. So keep that in mind as you build it. Dark style is obviously the opposite of light style. Let me see what it looks like. Now custom style allows you to add a background image or color. So let's start with the color. Green. I guess the closest. Yeah, there's a good one. That's like a Celtics green. Um, now if I wanted to use an image though, let's select the little upload button. Once again, you're presented with the image uploader screen. You can choose one from your PC, or you can use one of App Studio's resources. So just to show you, I'm going to go with one of the green ones. There we go. I, you know, something, I like that. Even though it's a football field, it kind of gives you that Boston feel, right? Now, foreground color. One word of advice here. One mistake I see a lot of people make is that they have these very contrast meshing colors that just don't work. Have you ever tried to use red and blue text next to each other? Or even better, a red background, blue text, or a blue background with red text? There are some combinations that you should not do. And you'll see that happen frequently if you don't consider it. Um, if it's in the same hex value range where you know you have, you can find it from different websites to get a good color scheme, and there are palettes that work well together. But you can come in here and actually copy in the hex code for that palette. So if you know a good background color, and in the same palette has a good foreground color, go right ahead and type it in. We want to use white for this one. Okay. Now the app bar. What is an application bar? It's this part on the bottom. That's where the users will have their buttons and a menu. Those three little, the ellipse right there, it slides out and gives the user the option to share the app, go to the about page, other things are in there. You want a background color for that. That is not the background color for your app. As you can see, it changed there. It's a little brighter green, uh, maybe gray, grayish green. That, that looks like a pretty good color for the app bar background. All right, now we click save. It's coming along, isn't it? Okay, let's come over to tiles. There are three tile templates. Uh, we'll go into more about that in a little bit once we reach that. But for now, I'm just going to choose a title for the app. It's called Boston. Now this title is what's shown on the tile. If you look to the left and to the right, here in the preview, it shows you what will come up when you, with your text here. And on the right, we'll do Boston information for the back title. Let's see how that looks. And it's wrapped when it's on the medium tile. And it's not shown on the small tile. The content is what is up here. So we'll sign useful links and information about Boston. Actually, let's add links, photos. Now, I want you to keep your eye out. I'm still typing, you can't go any further. There is a limit to how long this hex can be on the back. 
So you want to consider um, how long you want it to be. And then you get better at whittling it down, filtering it into something really good. And usually by the second or third time, you have it distilled to a very nice you know, Logan, uh, slogan or a logo for your app. So I'm going to go with photos and information. It, the user already knows this is about Boston, so you don't have to type it in there. Now here's your images. These are for the tiles. They're not related to the app, except for what's pinned on the start screen. You can change the different images. I'm going to use the same one, and that error you see pop up, it's just saying, hey, we already have a copy of this. So we're going to name it dash one or dash two, depending on how many times you've uploaded it. Okay, so I've chosen my three tiles, and I'm using the flip template. Okay, I'm going to quickly save it. You'll want to get in the habit of doing that. Okay, a lot of things that, out of all the things that get skipped when people are making their App Studio app, is the splash and lock screen. So once in a while, you'll go into the store, and you check out a cool app, and it launches, and you see this Windows logo. This is the default App Studio templates, splash and lock screen. Um, so what is a splash screen? When you first open an app, you'll see an image come up for one or two seconds and then move away for the regular app to come into focus. That is your splash screen. What is the lock screen? Lock screen, you as a third party developer get access to the user's lock screen. It's when they click the power button or unlock by double tapping. It stays on for a few seconds before the user has to slide up to unlock it or it just powers back down. That's the part of the phone where you see the time, their uh, upcoming calendar events, if that's what they have chosen, and little details on the bottom. You get to change that image as well. So let's just come in. And now you see another set of images that App Studio provides. The one that makes the most sense would be, let's go with that one and see how that looks. A bit kind of city ish, right? Now, for the lock screen, I want something a little more simple because they have that content on top of it. They won't, pay, they won't use your app as their lock screen app if it kind of meshes or makes their uh, notifications hard to read. So, let's find something that's solid color or there you go, and you can see the preview of what it looks like there. If you're going to generate a Windows 8 app, which we're not talking about today, but it's actually getting generated at the same time, you can go in and just choose the icon that goes there. But there is one big difference between a Windows Phone splash screen and a Windows 8 splash screen, and I should mention that quickly. The part that you get access to is this little area in the middle. You don't get the icon, you don't get your image to fill the whole screen like you do on the phone. Instead, you want to come up with a transparent icon, and then you choose the background color for it. So that's why we have the option for a background color. You see how that is? So when you do choose an image, it won't fill out this big to the corners. Instead, you just get a small 600 pixel wide area in the middle. All right, let's click Save. Now, publish info. This has changed recently, and I'm not going to go into it in this particular demo. But you can add your store association information, which puts inside the app package your publisher information that comes from your developer account. This is so that it associates it with an app name you've already created or are going to create. It allows for you to be the only person with the name for your app. For now, it's going to select the About page. So the About page is where you have information about the app, and it says there a little more. It allows you, it'll have the share NFC option there as well. So if they want to give a friend who has a Windows phone in your app, they can easily do it from the About page. You'll need a privacy statement. You can get more information about it from this link, but basically your privacy statement says, I'm not taking your information, I'm not sharing it, I'm not selling it, I'm just using what I have in the app just to run the app. Okay, for description, this app is for the user to more about Boston. 
One note, this is not the app description that shows in the store. Instead, it's just part of App Studio. Okay, now we've got everything set. This big blue finish button brings us to the generate page. Now we get a preview of what the app looks like. And the next thing you do is you download the package, the publish package, and source code. So what you can do is you click generate. Uh, the section that I skipped about the adding your publisher information to the package, you need to do that in order to generate a published package. But for now, we're only going to generate an installable package. And we'll give ourselves some comments by saying this is the first generated. You would want to leave yourself some useful information like, oh, this is when I added the new uh, YouTube section. So you can quickly look at your history and see which packages when you made certain changes. This becomes more useful down the road when you're, you know, when you're going back and you have multiple versions and you want to be able to say, okay, I don't want this anymore, but I don't want to lose everything. I don't want to start over. So you can jump back to a particular area and grab that package from there. Okay, generating. This usually only takes a couple minutes. We just wait for this to happen. And there we go. So what do we see here in front of us? We have a Windows Phone 8.1 package and we have a Windows 8.1 package. We're not going to concern ourselves with the Windows package. So just look in the left column and we'll expand all three. One of the things you need to do before you can install an app from App Studio on your phone is to get a certificate. It's a little certificate that gets sent to you via email that you can install. So what happens next is within a minute or two of your package being generated, you'll get an email. And the email will have very useful links for you. So one of the things that it has in the list is you'll see that there's an option that says you must install this certificate on your Windows phone and a little click here link. You'll click that and you'll get an option to download this file. Do you want to download? Yes. And you click open. The next thing that happens is do you want to add workplace account? Then it asks you, would you like to add the workplace account from Microsoft Corporation? This just means that you're allowing your phone to install apps that were built by Microsoft Corporation in the context of App Studio. So you click Add, and now your phone is ready and unlocked. It's ready to use to install App Studio apps. So the next step for you to put it on your phone would be to scan this QR code. So you'll find that on Windows Phone 8.1, there's a Bing lens. Um, so on your phone, if you go to your camera lenses, would you go to camera and it would say lenses, one of the lenses is Bing Vision. So the Bing Vision lens would allow you to scan it. So I'm going to click it. So now I've scanned it, and you'll see that there's a little bit.ly link. You click the bit.ly link. Next thing that happens, it says, you want to open or save the file. I'm going to open it. It's going to download it. And once it's done downloading, it'll say, do you want to install the app? Now, this is where the, you want to install the company app comes back into play, right? That's because it was built by Microsoft Corporation using their certificate. So you just click install, and that's it. Then you can go back to the start, and you look for it. I called it Boston. There it is. I'm going to click open. There's the splash screen. Now the app is loading. It's getting all the pictures from Flickr. Very cool. There's the page with the links that go outside of the app. Let's take a look at our templates. If we click the, uh, the snake one, and there's the details. The app bar, read out loud, share, and go to source. Pretty cool, right? That was easy. Okay, in the next demo, we'll go into a little more detail. Now that you know how to create and generate an app, let's take a brief look at how you would manage the various apps you might have created in App Studio. App Studio allows you numerous app projects simultaneously. As far as I'm aware, there are no limits to the number of projects. 
I personally created 20 different projects without any problems. The projects you create in App Studio are managed on the dashboard page, which is accessible from any page in App Studio by selecting the My Projects link on the menu bar. In the dashboard, you can create new projects, delete or edit existing ones, or jump to the Generate tab for an app to initiate the project generation process. You can also manage your App Studio account from the dashboard by selecting your Microsoft account from the top right corner of the screen. Today, we've covered the basics in getting started in App Studio. If you've had a chance to see App Studio in action, and should be able to jump right in and get started building an app. Keep in mind the concepts of data sources and how they relate to sections in your app. You also learned about working with the six main sections and how to use a menu to extend the capabilities of your app. Your next step is to jump into App Studio and start building. Take some time to download and work through this lab for this session, which will direct you to build your first app. This lab focuses on organizing your content and then laying the foundation for your app. You will need to determine what subject you wish to build an app for, and then spend some time collecting resources like pictures, pages, potential videos, RSS feeds, or anything else you can locate. Good luck, and I'll be back with you shortly in the next video, Improving Your App Studio App.